Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Kyle and for today's video, I wanted to make a quick one, just really nice and simple. How do you make a stair stringer? I've got my first one as a template already done and I'm gonna take you guys through how I did that, how I figured out the rise of the run and you know some real simple math that'll make your life a lot easier. I've already made this stringer as a template because I always like to do that and I would recommend you always to make one stringer, make sure it's perfect before you go ahead and make all of them. But I'm gonna show you how I did it. Now, the first thing you need to have is the height and not only the height of your framing, but you need to know the height of your finished floor so that everything can be equated to the entire formula. Now for me, it's 110 and a half. So I've, I've talked about this before guys, but the Construction Master Pro is the calculator I use on site and it's really easy. Check this out. I literally can go, we're just gonna hit clear a couple times, make sure there's nothing in there. 110 and a half inches. So that is my floor to floor height so that's my rise i'm going to go ahead and put rise so now my calculator knows that's my height and i'm just going to hit this stair button and boom there's my riser height seven and three eighths of an inch so i don't you don't have to have a calculator to do that you can use simple math you can divide 110 inches by whatever you want or maybe you want 15 treads or 14 treads and you're going to get the same calculation but for a small price tag if you're in construction, uh, and there's probably some cheap uh, free calculator apps out there, but this one is really powerful and I use it all the time and I've definitely shared it with you guys. Now, for tread width, I like to use a two by 12 always and I go ahead and give myself a nosing or an overhang, usually an inch and a quarter. Everybody's gonna have a different tread width depending on the run that you have available for your staircase. A lot of times, if you're confined, you might have to shrink that up to something smaller. So the next thing I want to show you guys is once you have your calculations, you're going to use one of these. Now, maybe not this one in particular, but some sort of a framing rafter square. We already know that our rise is seven and three eighths of an inch. If you look over here, I've already got this set up, but hopefully you can see that right where my framing or my two by hits the square is seven and three eighths of an inch. So that is my riser height. And if you look over here on this side, right where my framing square hits my lumber is at 10 inches. So what that means is I've set my square up to be seven and three eighths rise, 10 inch run. Now what I do, and I'll, I've already done this one, so I'm gonna show you here on this other board. First thing is I like to maximize my material. So I'm gonna come in here and just give myself an arbitrary first riser, okay? This is the angle of my first step, the face of my first step. And you'll notice all I did was flipped around my square, still on the same dimensions, and it's gonna give me that angle. Now when I rotate it back, Okay, I'm gonna have to move this one second. Now when I flip it back over, remember I've got that set at 10 and seven and three eighths. All I'm gonna do is line up this edge at 10, right where this thing comes in perpendicular. Don't always go off of your eye where you think it's supposed to be and move this far over. If you see what just happened, it looks like I'm right in line to be on a perfect, um, perfect connection to this corner, but because material is kind of rounded and weird, it's always nice to just make sure that your 10 inch like that is perpendicular perfect to the line that you've just made. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna make your little triangle. This is what's gonna get cut out for your stair and it's gonna be 10 inch, seven and three eighths. One thing that I want you to know is that when determining your stair layout, I said you have to know all of your final dimensions because this first step, if I just go ahead and cut it at seven and three eighths, Okay, and I make this the bottom that's on the ground. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna go ahead and put another two by 12 
right here, the two by 12 is gonna sit here for my first step. Now, this rise is actually nine, wait, eight and seven eighths of an inch. We don't want that. So, with that being said, you have to consider your first step, you have to take an inch and a half off of your seven and three eighths. So if I was at seven and three eighths and I'm gonna go minus an inch and a half, and I can just do this pretty easily here by doing inch and a half, you have to, you have to make sure that you figure that, and this is the thing that I always messed up as a beginner is I would always forget to subtract my bottom and I would end up having too tall of a first step. And same goes with the top. Remember at 110 and a half, that's my top finished floor. You have to remember that because otherwise you'll have too potentially short of a top step. So we're gonna go ahead and lay this out really quickly, but I'm gonna show you another tip that will help you um, be more accurate. And for stairs, I think it's super important to be accurate. So what I like to do is make a little tick mark right on that first tread corner. And I'm just gonna set myself a nail. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in this calculator app. Another perk of having the calculator. Seven, three eighths, rise. That's my tread height, my riser. 10 inch run. Gives me a diagonal of 12 and seven sixteenths. Here's the cool thing. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna click my tape measure over that nail, and I'm gonna come down the side and I'm gonna mark 12 and 7 sixteenths. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add another 12 and 7 sixteenths. That's 24 and 7 eighths. And I think you're probably gonna understand what I'm doing here, but I'm gonna go down this whole thing, keep adding 12 and 7 sixteenths, 37, 5 sixteenths, and for the sake of time, we're not gonna do all of them, but what that allows me to do is to ensure that I never get off by really anything. Because materials are no good, wood is just inconsistent. Look at that. I just made my mark, and it is dying right here. So this is basically a quick check to make sure that I don't ever get off, because it's very easy to either grow your dimensions by being off just a 16th or a 32nd every time. But this is a, a nice visual check to make sure that my tread riser and my run are always dying at the exact same spot. I just thought that would be a good little tip to remember. That is how you mark out your stairs. So I'm gonna do that whole thing and then we'll, we'll show you how I cut it out. And I'll give you some tips and tricks on making sure that you stay nice and accurate when you're cutting your stringers. Now, if you're curious about this, you might have seen it, you might have not, but this is a Martinez Tool Titanium Framing Square. Every one that is made, it comes with your name on it. You have to request this. Mark is a buddy of mine. He actually gave this to me, so I'm quite blessed. But what I like about it, unlike the stair gauges that you see on like an Empire, which are awesome. I mean, they're cheap, they're seven, ten dollars They latch onto the outside and sometimes it's hard to see exactly what you're doing because they get in the way with these knobs here in the middle you have clear access to the outside of your square but also they're oversized so the the thickness of this helps with any of the um, inconsistencies of lumber as lumber seems to get worse every year all these rounded edges you get sometimes some some really bad stuff like this those little stair gauges they don't work because they're not big enough these things work really well. I don't make anything off of Mark. He is a friend of mine, and this is a great tool uh, specifically for rafters, so it's amazing for rafters, and someday I'll show you guys that too. Now that we have the entire stringer marked out, this was the template that you guys saw at the very beginning of the video, so I know it's good. Uh, I like to go ahead and I take all of my stringers and I will square them all up to be flush on the top side the side that you're actually gonna be cutting out. And then I screw them together. And then, because I'm fortunate enough to have a boom saw, this thing will cut through the entire stack. But I'll show you how this works 
Uh, I think it's pretty slick. I don't have any eye protection on me. Don't blast me too bad in the comments. I'll make sure that I got my safety squints on, but I recommend always wearing as much safety protection as you can, obviously, guys. <laughs> definitely see what this allows you to do is it's going to allow you to make perfect templates that are all exactly the same I used to just go ahead and cut one out then I'd take my pencil and I'd come and I'd scribe along it but what happens is especially if you're doing a lot of these things can get off and then it becomes exponentially different from one to the other so hopefully that makes sense I'm gonna go ahead and get all these cut out and then I'll show you guys maybe installing them. We'll go from there. So now what I'm doing is putting my top riser on. I'll put a riser in the middle and a riser in the bottom, and then I'll go ahead and stand this up. These will come back off and get glued, but this is just temporary. I find it easier, instead of having a bunch of stringers standing up there like spaghetti noodles, I kind of get them together and then put them in place. Okay. shape of the stairs they really probably aren't that strong as a single piece but when you put it all together I always like to try to go minimally uh, 16 inches on center some guys would maybe just do one in the middle or you can do what they call a strong back and you can notch out one 2 by 12 and then put a solid 2 by 12 up the edge the only problem with that that I have in a shop is that it kind of gives you a lot of place to collect dust and dirt when you've got kind of those cracks so this is open it'll be nice and easy to keep nice and clean all right it's finally time to install all the treads and risers and i remember i just put these here to make sure everything stayed nice and spaced but uh and i did the top one that way i can glue and fasten the bottom one first and then i'll take this off and then i'll work my way up installing the riser first and then the tread oops I almost forgot. Greg, you already got yours on. Yep. My IsoTunes, these not only work Bluetooth with your phone or whatever, uh, you can take phone calls, sounds pretty good. They're noise canceling. I think they decrease the decibels by 22 decibels. Something like that. OSHA certified as hearing protection on the job site. So um, they're really good. They're pretty comfortable. They don't bother me. I'll wear them all day. I just got back from lunch, that's why I didn't have them in. Uh, and the biggest thing is I notice when I go home, maybe you notice this too, Greg, my ears don't ring when I'm laying in yeah. bed. My ears feel fine. Yeah.
right, I just took my router here and routered this out for this pipe. I really wish the pipe wasn't there, but it is what it is. And looks like I could probably make that work, but it's a little bit tight. So let's go ahead and router out just a little bit more. Tread. change that pipe. You got like a pile of sawdust for me? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. But really, I just wanted to add some exist or some extra holding power here on the stringers. They're all screwed in from the backside, but um, you know this is just going to help. Obviously, as time goes on, you don't want things moving around too much. I'm actually going to go on this side. That way, they're kind of visible to the eye. Now, thing to note is it wouldn't fit in here because this is an odd space, but on a 16 inch on sticker, I don't have a problem getting in here and shooting my shot as they say. It's always a good feeling when you're putting that last part to the job and you know that you're Finally there and complete. Nice smooth transition, especially when I suck it down. That's gonna be nice, Greg. Now if you look here, this is what I love about GRKs. When they go in, they don't make a big mess out of the material. They just basically tear it and make a nice clean uh, recess. So they just really look finished, even though this is a... Uh, even though that's a framing screw, they look really nice. And that is the stairs. You could add some structure underneath. However, I don't think I'm gonna do that in any permanent fashion. I'm gonna go ahead and I've got one scrap piece of two by that I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll fasten underneath this outside. And really the only reason I'm doing that is because I think the client is gonna build like a little utility room underneath. So I'll let him do that and I'm just gonna put the support there just for added brace because this is a pretty tall staircase. Once it glues, all the glue hardens, it's gonna be really nice and solid. But uh, yeah, handrail, don't worry. Customers doing that as well around this whole mezzanine. That's all we got here for the staircase. Hopefully it helped you guys. If you got any questions, drop them down below in the comments. Make sure if this was helpful to you, if you guys enjoyed the content, hit that subscribe button and follow along with what we're doing. There's a lot of exciting things coming and uh, 2020 is shaping up to be a good year. So we'll see you guys later. Thank you for the support. What do you think about that one? Clean. Huh? That's clean.